Usually on our Ask Q&A session, we answer all your questions about bikes, but we're noticing we're getting loads of specific questions from lots of you about very particular things. So today we're gonna to spin things around a bit and do an Ask Special all about adjusting your gears and finding out how things are going wrong. Do your gears skip? Are they under shifting? Are they over shifting? Are they going over into the cassette? Is it taking its time going down the block? Any of those questions, they're gonna be covered in this video and hopefully you'll get your gears working a treat. Despite the fact you have an external transmission on a mountain bike, when they're working, your gears are absolutely fantastic. The problem is, all it takes is a hit of a derailleur or a bit of misalignment or something not quite right and your gears will be all over the place. We're talking gears that skip, a bit of ghost shifting perhaps, if your gear's changing gears when you're not even using the lever there. Uh, perhaps your gear's not coming back down the block again. Uh, it could be because your cable's clogged up with gunk, any number of things. Now in this video, we're gonna work through each one systematically so you can trace any issues you might be having. All right, let's get started by having a check of the hardware first. So the first things first is you wanna make sure that your chain, your cassette and your sprockets and of course the derailleur are in good working order. Because common sense dictates if there's any issues here, this will translate as poor shifting. Now something that every mountain biker should try and own is a chain wear checker. Now there's various types on the market. This one's a kind of workshop spec one. They're a bit more expensive, but to be honest, even though they're more accurate, you don't really need one like this. These pressed steel plated ones are super simple. They're cheap and they will save you money in the long run. Now use one of these by literally inserting it into the chain itself. And it gives you a reading of how worn the chain is or how worn it is not basically. It's got a little key on there and it tells you when to replace your chain. Now in an ideal world, you wanna replace your chain before it's at the point when this tells you it's worn. And the reason for that is you get a phenomenon known as chain stretch. Now metal plates can't stretch, that's not physically what happens. And it's actually a bit of a misunderstood uh, phrase, I guess you'd say. So you need to understand the, what makes up a chain to get your head around this. So you have the pins that go through the middle, you have the outer links, you have the inner links, and you have that roller that's on the inside there. That's effectively a bush. Now what happens is as the chain moves around, as it's being used under torque, those rollers actually sort of bed out on the inside and the whole thing gets a little bit baggy and the pitch of the chain, which is the distance between those pins, it stretches very slightly. So it's not the plates moving, it's just the play in the chain enabling it to get slightly longer. And the effect this has on the rest of your transmission is actually quite detrimental. So if you look very closely at any number of the sprockets, you'll see that this roller is supposed to sit perfectly in that trough. As soon as everything gets a bit stretched, it starts wearing the wrong part of those sprockets and then accordingly those sprockets will start turning into little spiky teeth and you won't have the traction from the chain and then of course your shifting is going to start failing. Now it's up to you how often you want to check this and how often you want to replace these things but you can get two or three chains if you're vigilant to one set of sprockets at the rear and if you look at the price of the sprockets on your bike depending on what they are you'll know that this makes sense so get yourself one of these and check your chain. Next up is a bit more common sense. So having a look for any damage, any missing teeth and things like that. The same applies to the sprockets on the front as it does on the cassette. But something to not, uh, well, something to be mindful of is the profile of the cassette teeth themselves. Now the shifting ramps, in particular on Shimano's cassettes, they're a bit more prominent than you can see on other brands. They're designed to hook the chain up onto the next sprocket and to help pull it back down again. Now if you look closely, it almost looks like there's a few damaged teeth here but you can tell that they're not because they're part of a profiled shape that works between them all in order to hook that chain up. So just don't confuse them between damaged ones. You can definitely tell when a cassette is worn because it'll be, uh, they'll all be worn teeth rather than just having a few here and there. But if there's teeth missing completely, then you may need to replace your gear. Now the next up, of course, is to actually look at the rear derailleur. Have a look at the sprockets on the bottom here. See if they actually rotate freely. They should be nice and smooth. If, if there's any, gritty, uh, any sort of grittiness to them or if they're not rotating, the chain won't pass over them. And again, that's gonna to translate to your gears not working. So a bit of common sense really. Give your drivetrain a little bit of TLC and then you can start seeing what's working and what's not. Okay, so we've had a bit of a hardware check. The next thing is to make sure 
everything's actually in line. It's all fully aligned and the uh, derailleur is actually fully mounted to the frame as it should be. Now, if you look up close here, you have your derailleur hanger bolt. So it's typically a five millimeter, sometimes a Torx T25, and that mounts this to the hanger that's part of the frame. Now, the way the hanger mounts to the frame differs on certain bikes. On bikes with a quick release, you'll find it often has just a bolt or maybe two bolts to hold it on, so check those. If, like this bike, your, bo your bike has a bolt-through system, it's going to be intrinsic with that. So whatever system you have, make sure that the hanger itself is straight and make sure it's solid. Now, you can check the alignment of it by looking at the gap here between the smaller sprocket and the hanger itself. You want to make sure that that's completely in line. That's a good gauge of reference without having to have expensive workshop tools. Now, if it is bent, you will need to bend it back. Now, if you're unsure about this, definitely take it to a bike shop or someone that has a derailleur alignment gauge, especially the tool, especially for doing this. But if you want to do it yourself, an adjustable spanner with the derailleur removed, you can straighten these back, but go very easy on it because you don't want to snap the thing, okay? Now, the next one is to make sure that the actual hanger bolt itself is tight because naturally these can unwind themselves on bikes if they don't have thread lock on them and you've been riding loads of dry rocky trails for a long time they can back out slightly so if that's happening that all affects the alignment of the derailleur now finally you want to make sure that the actual lower cage is completely in line with the sprockets so check this on both your lowest gear and your highest gear so that is the biggest sprocket and the smallest sprocket and use line of sight from the back of the bike now if your bike's got really large tires you might struggle with it on the biggest sprocket here but you can normally get a good indication if the derailleur is in line or not and if it's not then well it's bent and it does need a bit of work on it now if your lower cage is bent slightly the major thing is to make sure it can't get dragged into the spokes at all because a it can snap the derailleur off it could damage your derailleur hanger and it can ruin spokes as well it can snap and clean out the wheel uh, of course that's going to be an expensive repair so uh, do take care with that you can bend the lower cage back by hand but you've got to be careful doing this because it's easy to go too far so if you're unsure about this definitely time for a trip to the bike shop now the last thing to check is the cable routing itself make sure you have a good route from the shifter at the handlebars all the way down to the back of the bike. You wanna make sure that the, the cable itself isn't too, like, too short. And you need to make sure that the ferrules are actually sat into the stops correctly. Now on my bike, I've got basically a constant length of outer cable that runs from the shifter inside the frame and all the way to the bottom here. So the only one I have to check is this one here. Now if this pulls out slightly, then under pressure, when you're trying to change into a lower gear, that's a bigger sprocket, it's going to move around. You're not going to get the gear shifting you need. So make sure your ferrules are in. But your bike might have external routing and it might have several cable stops on there with lots of different points at which the outer cable sits in. So check all of those stops and make sure the cable is sat in. The last one to check is the actual derailleur cable here, the way it actually bolts on. Check the orientation of this because it's super easy to have this going the wrong way. And yes, the gears will work, but they will never be quite perfect. So you can see here, it just goes around a little, a little curved radius and it's held in place by that pinch bolt. Um, it is fairly self-explanatory, but just double check yours is in the correct position. Next up are your adjustment points of the derailleur, of which there are four major things on every system for you to adjust. The first one we're gonna talk about is your cable tension. So the inner cable runs from your shifter all the way down and it's clamped on at the bottom here. Now you adjust this when you're in the smallest pocket, which is your highest gear. Now note that this is the point where the system has the least amount of tension on it. When you pull the cable through here, you shouldn't be pulling it tight, just taut, okay? So it shouldn't be baggy at this point here, just enough tension in here that when you tighten up the pinch bolt, you can pull on it and you can see it moving just a little bit like this. So essentially, if the cable here is actually baggy, there's gonna be a big delay. When you change gear at the shifter, it's probably not gonna to correlate to you changing the gear at this end. And the complete opposite could be said, if it's too tight, then you're gonna be over shifting. We'll already actually be trying to shift up the block there. Again, it should just be taut, okay? So make sure that that is nice and secure. And then you can fine tune by adjusting a barrel adjuster at the lever. Now that's typically something you would do once you're riding along or once you've got the rest set up to make sure the gears are completely indexed. Now there's the three other adjustment points to make sure you can understand. There's the B screw and there's the limit screws. The limit screws are responsible for the position of the guide wheels which are on the sprung cage in relation to the cassette. 
So there's one to adjust it over the, or under the smallest sprocket, and one to adjust it under the biggest sprocket. The derailleur needs to line up completely in line with those two sprockets in order for the indexing of the gears to work correctly. So in this case, it's a Shimano derailleur. Uh, they're adjusted by Allen key. Sometimes it is a screwdriver for this. The upper of the two limit screws is responsible for the, the smaller sprocket and the lower one is responsible for the larger sprocket. And then there is the B screw. This is also known as B tension. Now this is responsible for the height of the pulley wheel cage underneath your bigger sprocket here. And the height of this will differ depending on how big your cassette is on the rear. So there'll be measurements, anything from three to up to about 10 millimeters, depending on the model and the brand. And of course, with the size that you have. So you will need to double check that with the manufacturer of your one. But if there's not enough distance there, you'll actually find the upper guide wheel will be rumbling as it contacts the cassette. So it's clearly not right. And if it's too, too much of a gap, there's gonna be a delay in shifting back down into a higher gear. So that's just one of the things that can happen. So we've checked all the hardware over and we know it's in good functioning order and we've checked that it's all aligned on the bike. So the only other thing that can really affect your gears working correctly is the indexing. Now this refers to one click at your shifter correlating to one gear changed at the derailleur. And really it's all about cable tension. This is why you have the barrel adjuster on the shifter so you can make fine adjustments whilst you're riding to make sure everything is working. Now what you want to do to start with is make sure you're in the smallest sprockets, that's your highest gear. Now when you're in this, there's the least amount of tension on the system. So you may need to add tension with the barrel adjuster in order to get the gears to shift. So try one click first, as you're just pedaling along, it should hop up one gear. If it's not, apply some tension, which means counterclockwise adjustments on that barrel adjuster until it jumps up. Do this until it jumps up the first two or three sprockets and it goes back down again successfully. If it's not going down successfully, you need to back off some of that tension. And likewise, if it jumps up too many in one click, the same thing, you've got too much tension. It's pretty simple. Once you've made those limit adjustments and you've got the B tension, really it's all down to cable tension. So go systematically through those gears. Like I said, experiment with the barrel adjuster on the shifter there. And if it's still not playing ball, then really there's a couple other things that it could be. Your inner cable inside the outer housing could be completely filthy. So if there's friction in there, that's gonna affect everything. In which case it's time for a new inner cable. And whilst you're at it, flush out that outer housing with some good lubricant. And there's one other teeny thing that can happen as well, which we haven't referenced, is you might have a stiff link on your chain. So if you're noticing any clicking whilst you're pedaling, Cycle your pedals backwards. Watch what the pulley wheels are doing. If there's a stiff link, you'll see it will just jump up and down very slightly as it goes past. And to get rid of that, you can literally manipulate that chain link by hand or with a good multi-tool that has two sets of jaws on the chain guide, put your chain in the closest jaw to you. And basically you can use this to just free that link up very slightly. You've got to do it just a tiny bit of pressure on it. All it does is just enable the outer links just to uh, free up any sort of pressure they have on them that causes the stiff link. Well, uh, that's really all there is to gears. They're quite simple. You just have to make sure you've nailed a few things. Making sure, of course, your hardware is in really good condition, good working order. Making sure it's installed on the bike correctly and it's aligned. Everything has to be perfectly lined up in order for those gears to work. And then of course, your cable tension. Now, absolutely key to making sure those gears jump up and down as you want them to. Now, unless your bike snapped or anything else that's dramatically gonna affect those things, this hopefully will answer the question of why are my gears skipping or not working? Uh, hopefully you like this new format. Let us know what you think in the comments underneath. And uh, well, we'll see you in the next video. See you later.